Hi, welcome back to Vietnam Real Estate Insights, the program that looks at the Vietnam real estate market and the investment opportunities as well as challenges with industry experts. I'm your host, Harlow Russell, and today's topic is very interesting from the perspective of an American Vietnamese about buying property in Vietnam. We have with us today uh, Mr. Andy Lang, and Andy grew up in the United States and has a, a career in the U.S. in real estate, both as a mortgage banker, as real estate sales, and real estate development. Andy has been in Vietnam nine years and currently runs a recruiting company that handles both expat and local positions. In addition, because of his American real estate experience, he's been a consultant to local and international developers about what exactly a foreign buyer needs and wants different than a local buyer. So Andy, welcome today. Thanks for your time to be to join us. Thank you very much, Alo, for inviting me here. And thank you, the uh, Vietnam Real Estate Insight crew, for having me here. It's a pleasure. Great. Well, tell us a little bit more about yourself, uh, uh, the transition from your uh, real estate career and banking career in the United States to Vietnam, and what you've been finding in the last year or two in terms of uh, the needs of the market here for your expertise. So I came back to Vietnam in 2006 um, and uh, opened a couple of companies and then in 2010 I went back to the uh, US. I stayed there for a couple of years and 2013 I came back to Vietnam and um, I was looking around for uh, either to buy or to rent a unit okay. uh, in Vietnam and um, I had many frustration, uh, many mm. experience uh, with the uh, uh, the sales force uh, in Vietnam, so I thought that there I could contribute my knowledge, my 10 years of experience in real estate in the U.S. to the uh, Vietnamese uh, market. Well, very good. Well, give us uh, your perspective as a potential foreign property buyer, and even though you uh, were born in Vietnam, you grew up in the U.S., and therefore you're considered Viet Q is the term, so in many ways considered still a foreigner. So give us your perspective. Uh, what are the major differences about buying property, residential property, in the U.S. from buying it here in Vietnam? Um, well, there's a few points that I, I, I can see right away. Um, no consistency in the message to deliver. Mm. Um, I could go to... In the U.S., uh, I go to a luxury project, then I was expecting a different kind of service, a different okay. kind of sales mentality, a different kind of process. Okay, D different type than, than what? Than a first-time home buyer sector. Ah, okay. Here in Vietnam, it feel, I feel that there's no, there's no line. It, it's all blurred in mm. first-time home buyer and luxury. Um, pretty much any developers can wake up one day and decide to be are luxury developers. Hmm. Meanwhile, they have no experience in that. Okay. And therefore, the message that they deliver to their potential buyers is still the message belong to the first time, first time home buyer. Okay. Or the uh, the middle level instead of upscale affluent type of buyers. I see. The sophisticated kind of buyer. So you're finding that um, in terms of residential property. The distinctions and distinctions in terms of message, communication, marketing, service between different types of residential property uh, is really quite the same and not very segmented. That is correct. Okay. Um, on the principle, sure, certain developers would classify themselves as luxury developers. Yes. However, it takes years. It takes years of marketing and years of experience to be recognized as a luxury developers. Mm. You cannot just wake up one day and decide to be a luxury developers because you don't have the basic background, you don't have the basic knowledge to mm. become one yet. It, it is a different market than it say a first time home buyer. Exactly. Or a young buyer. Mm. Um, another thing I see is that there's no licensing requirements here for a real estate agent. Yes. Uh, pretty much anybody can be a real estate agent. Um, you have a, 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 a sugar cane stand by the street and there's a sign next to it saying that they could facilitate buy and sell real estate. So could I even, you know, uh, get a name card and print myself as a real estate uh, broker? Absolutely. Uh, there, there's no requirement and there's no penalty for not doing the right thing. Mm. Um, I find that's very disturbing. Absolutely. That's, that's very different than the United States or Singapore, certainly, where 
it's a lot of restrictions. Absolutely. And then communication. Um, I have visited numerous for my own personal needs and also for my uh, curiosity. Okay. And a lot of times the agent would just say, this is Vietnam. Instead, <laughs> instead of explaining to us, explaining to the potential buyers why, they just say, this is Vietnam, as if like, take it or leave it. Mm. And to me as a potential buyer, that yes. is not what I want from somebody who I would trust with a large amount of money. Sure, it's, it's not what I would want either. I mean, a buying, buying a residential property, a home, is usually the biggest financial decision that most people make. So you want somebody who's very trustworthy and credible. Um, I understand another problem here, Andy, is that there is a lack of third-party due diligence uh, when you are considering a home. So in the United States, uh, there's, there's quite a, a rigid inspection process and third parties who you pay to do the work and fairly routine, I think, across all 50 states. Uh, but here in Vietnam, no third party due diligence, no inspectors. What, how, do you, how, do you know, how do you know what you're buying? Um, you really don't. Okay. You really don't. Uh, you just hope for the best. There are several uh, outfits here that call themselves at home inspection service, but really there's no, um, there's no results. There's no, no, nothing concrete that you can really rely on because mm. once they make a mistake, there's nobody to fix it for you. Mm. Um, in the U.S., I had a case where I, I saw a property and I, the home inspection service uh, said that the central air will last for another year. And then a month later, it, it failed. I had to put my money out up front to buy a new unit for the home buyers. Mm. And then I went after the home inspection service to get reimbursed. And that's what we do in the US. Here, um, I don't know. I don't think that's going to happen. I have talked to the various expat home owners, uh, and um, they have to deal with the problem themselves. So really, uh, there's, there's no real third parties that can help you with your home buying process. Wow, well that's a significant significant gap. Yeah. Um, you uh, have sold real estate uh, in, in the Boston area, You're originally from Boston, as well as in Florida. Um, tell us about, again, some comparisons of the laws and legal situation of, let's say, buying residential property in the U.S. versus what the situation is here, uh, you know, if you have a problem. In the, in the U.S., it's very clear cut. Uh, the property um, that you own or you're about to buy, there's the title search, there's the process yes. that, that the attorney will help you and the title search company would make sure that it's a clear uh, deed. Mm. Um, here in Vietnam, um, that, that could be a very, very long and tedious process. Mm. Um, one property could be sold to various parties and then once um, once they find out, it's just a matter of long, draw-out court fight. Mm. Um, so you could you could actually buy a property that already been sold to wow. someone else in Vietnam. Wow, that's significant. Now that's a that's a secondary property, meaning a property that's already existing, a house, let's say, or a villa. Yes. Uh, and you're buying from a previous owner. Uh, it's already built. Uh, similar in the primary market, which is typically new. Uh, a new house or a new apartment or condo that's offered by a developer? So uh, the law changed since last July that yes. allowed VQ and expat to, to, to buy properties. However, from point A to point B, point A where you buy the property yes. and point B where you have all the proper documents showing the ownership of the property, it's a long, long and many detours road. What's, it, what, what's the typical amount of time required to get the official documentation, which is called the, the pink book, red book, pink book, red book. Right, uh, the red book. Red book. Right. Uh, essentially, it's different for everybody. Hmm. Um, there's no standard uh, procedure, and actually there's none from the central government yet that direct the lower provincial level on what to do and what the procedures are. Mm. So they uh, talk, they talk, they, they, they say, okay, here's the law that the expat and VQ can own property, but how is another thing. I see. So it's, it's, it's still a, a, a improving process. It's still getting there. Mm. Well, let's go back to something you, you, you noted about salespeople here, particularly real estate salespeople. So tell us about the, the, the Vietnamese sales culture 
versus um, uh, international or American sales culture related to buying and selling a real estate? How, how, what, what, what is it? So is it very different? Um, I, I think so. I think it's very different. Um, I travel to various countries, and uh, what I have seen is that international sale culture is about selling what the customer need and yes. what the customer want. Yes. What I see here is more about selling what we have mm -hmm. instead of mm -hmm. what the customer want. Um, and and the, transfer, the transformation we need is that we have to sell to what buyers want. Mm. And it's not that difficult to do. It just has to be executed by the CEO level or the chairman level all the way down. And it has to be um, encouraged and it has to be maintained and monitored to make sure that happens. Mm. It's not that hard. No, not that hard. I mean, theoretically, but the actual execution, you, I, I get uh, the impression that uh, not, not, you haven't experienced too much uh, in, in terms of good sales culture uh, uh, as you've been looking at property here. Is that correct? Um, well, uh, no, um, yes, you're right. I, okay. I haven't seen, I haven't seen the one that makes me happy yet, mm. uh, perhaps because um, they are not used to this kind of segment mm. of clients. Mm. They're used to the local where um, you know, it's been for years that way. However, now we want to sell, we want to sell more to the expat and VQ, so we have to understand them. We have to understand their men mentality, they have, yes. we have to understand what they want and uh, what they look out of uh, their sale person. So once we understand that, we will have a better, better shot at closing the sure. deal. Sure. Well, if, if you are a foreign buyer, uh, might be a viewer that's looking at this and, and is perhaps interested to buy in Vietnam or possibly somebody here already, you know, what, what can you do to protect yourself given, given these challenges? You know, what, what can one do uh, to, to, to lower the risk as you've described it? You have to do a lot, lot more homework. A lot more homework here. A lot here. more homework here. Um, you have to actually take a drive out to the site uh -huh. and you have to talk to the people surrounding the area um, you have to read the news to find out is it really the land is free. You have to really do homework about the park area, the community area. Is that mm -hmm. going to happen? Mm -hmm. the, the, the pool, is that going to happen? You have to do a lot more homework for yourself. Mm. Uh, and most importantly, trust your instinct. When trust your instinct. Yes, when you feel something is wrong with the sale agent, when you feel, something is, when you feel that she or he is, is flipping, mm -hmm. um, it's time to walk away. Mm. Trust all, your instincts. Always demand, always demand numbers, always demand information. But, but, you know, one of the challenges of a, of a new country or developing country is information may not be readily available. What if the information that you're looking for simply doesn't exist? What do you do? Use your knowledge. Okay. Use your knowledge. I have walked into buildings and I ask, um, how many, what is percentage of, of uh, investor versus actual home buyers here, sure. and they don't they don't know they wouldn't know. So how would I find out? I would walk up to the the community coffee and they ask, mm -hmm. "Hey, excuse me, are you a tenant or are you a, an actual owner?" Mm. And or uh, I can go visit the place at night and see how many windows are dark yes. and how many are lit. Okay, and that's when you can tell who what is occupancy rate is, ah. and is this a place that you want to invest in or not. Mm. or a place you want to live or not. A uh, brand new building coming up, uh, let's say 200 units, and it's only 10 people living there, and it's been there for six months. Maybe not a place where you want Maybe. to put money in there. Maybe not, right? Yes. So you have to do a lot more homework, meaning uh. that you have to get involved a lot more than just the regular you know, uh, the information on the paper that's shown to you. Sounds like you have to do a lot more investigative work yourself, uh, at least here, correct? Absolutely. Mm. If you want to keep your money and invest it safely. Ah, okay. Well, tell us uh, from your standpoint and, and working with uh, local developers, what, what do you tell them? What is the difference between foreign buyers and local buyers? What do foreign buyers require that are different than local Vietnamese buyers? The foreign buyers, they want information, authentic information. They want the agent to tell them what they know. Um, don't make up stories. Um, treat them like a home buyer instead of, oh, this is my next mm. uh, commission. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what we want. Yes. We want, uh, we want real information. We don't want information that, uh, okay, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. Is this going to be or is it not going to be? Um, if you don't know something, it's okay. Tell us. Um, um, because not everybody know everything. Correct. So sure. tell me you don't know. Um, and please, um, as a VQ, um, I, I also, I, I love Vietnam. Please don't tell me that is Vietnam. Because to me, that is just uh, a sign of, 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 of give up. Mm. A sign of, of uh, uh, confusion. Mm. Um, I have visited a developer where the second bathroom is about two steps away from the dining room, which has a nice long table. And I asked the sales agent, I said, well, um, if I was having a party here and my guest has an urge to use the facility, I mean, I can, we can hear everything going on in, in the bathroom. You think that is something that could be a flaw in the designing of mm. the property? And she so go, no, this is Vietnam, it's okay. <laughs> and this is from a luxury builder, developer, Industry 7. Mm. Wow, that's an interesting example. Well, you know, the re re residential property market is increasing. That's, that's been a consistent uh, a conversation point of all my guests. But Vietnam did go through two uh, bubbles in terms of residential property uh, in the last couple of years. Do you feel, from your perspective, is, is, the, is the rise of the market here, is it stable, or could we be going through another bubble as we speak? Um, I just attended a, a, um, a real estate convention a couple of months ago, and uh, there were high-level uh, uh, government officers talking about come out with the property tax okay. um, to uh, control the bubble. Mm. Just like any other industry, any other uh, country, when you have... When you have too much investor versus real home buyers, mm -hmm. there's a there's a bubble about okay. to happen. You walk into any building here uh, in Vietnam, any high rise, and find out to see what is the real percentage of home buyers mm. versus investor, and mm. you will see there's a bubble. Yeah, this is a key point uh, in all real estate markets, but yep. particularly difficult here because getting that information, that percentage, may be a, a total guess. Again, is the, um, I, I think my method is pretty simple. If I go out, um, you go along, you know, uh, Ding Bing Fu Street or, mm -hmm. or District 2 or District 7 what's not, and you see some of the new buildings have been sitting there for a year and you don't see that many lights on at, at, at 7 p.m. that you know that... That's, that's, that, a, that's a, a simple, relatively easy test. Yes, mm, yes, yes. Okay, that's good advice. Well, our last question, uh, you know, based on your perspective, it does sound a little bit like the wild, wild west or, or wild, wild east here uh, in terms of buying residential property. What, what's being done to improve the real estate industry and improve the professionalism of real estate agents here? Well, I've been a pretty vocal uh, 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 voice in uh, regarding providing better training for the sales staff, uh, encouraging more training, real, real formal training instead of uh, um, uh, on-the-job training because real estate is one of those things that, like you say, is a big decision in our life. Um, we want to work with professional. I'm not going to trust somebody with $6 billion, $300,000, when she wearing a spandex pants to help me out. <laughs> mm. um, I have went to uh, a, a, a local developer and it was amazing because the sales staff, they were wearing spandex pants and jeans and t-shirts. And I asked the, the manager, I said, well, if, if it was you, would you trust $200,000 with these people? And, you know, um, so better training, better processes. Mm. Most sales manager will not know what are the common touches on successful deals and where are the bottlenecks on the deals that failed. They don't have those statistics. You ask them, um, can you give me an accurate forecast on your pipeline, on your revenues? And you get a glazed look in their eyes. Mm. Like, what, what, what are we talking about here? Mm. Um, more statistics, more, more numbers. More statistics, more yeah. data, more processes. Yes, well, to maximize the leads, better marketing. Marketing in Vietnam is there is a, a, a very gray line between marketing and sales in Vietnam. Uh, marketing is all about generating leads. 
and bring the leads back to the sale people so that they can execute those leads. Uh, a lot of mo most marketing managers in Vietnam do not have a clear agenda when they hold an event. They don't know what ROI they want. They don't know. They don't know what they want after the event. Mm. They don't know how to get the leads from the events and who their targets are and how to respond to the needs and one of those clients. And I've been very, very um, vocal about that, telling the, the developers that they need to have better marketing department, they have better training for the sales department, and most importantly, processes, have effective processes to follow up with the potential buyers. Mm. Well, it sounds like uh, in, in terms of opportunities for training and education and information, there's, there's plenty to keep you busy. So, well, uh, thank you, Andy. Uh, that concludes our interview with Andy Lang, uh, Viet Q, uh, American, who has been in the real estate business in the United States, is in the recruitment business here, and also helping to improve the real estate industry in Vietnam. Uh, thanks so much for your time and your expertise. And thank you for joining us uh, with another segment of Vietnam Real Estate Insights. Uh, please come back. Please check the other interviews for the other industry leaders. I'm your host, Harlow Russell, and all the best.